Ah, uh, yes. Hello again. Today is the 19th of April 2015 and this video is about the 8th card in a Celtic Cross spread. First though, um, I wanted to let you know that I finally, um, I finally got something started at the new site. The URL is www, I'll put it on screen, but it's um, dynamic-tarot.com and there's some content there. Uh, there are three articles and one discussion article that it happens to be about the Four of Cups. So this, what, what I've got so far at dynamictarot.com is stage one, because I'm now setting up that site as a membership site where um, it's free to join and you've got your own login and password and so on. And it gives you access to more detailed and maybe more in-depth or more complete information about the tarot, how to read it. There's going to be text, audio files, video files. And the idea is that if you, if you join and become a member, then you get more complete information. It's not that I'm going to be holding back bits and pieces from these YouTube videos. It's just that um, at the site, I'll have time and opportunity to give more examples, right? So in a YouTube video, I might talk, I've got 15 minutes or so in a video. Or, um, so I may talk about a reverse card and give a couple of examples. But at the site, I can give maybe five or six examples and um, a longer explanation, or I can tie in information about reverse cards with other material. Um, and that's what you get if you happen to, or if you decide to join the site. You just need to give a valid email address and it's done. And at the same time, if you have questions or comments or, um, that you'd like me to deal with at the, new, uh, at the new site, maybe a particular topic, or you've had a problem or a question that you've got, let me know and I'll try to include it somewhere um, at the new site. Meanwhile, back at the Celtic Cross, we're now at the eighth position. So last week I said that the seventh card goes to the right of the spread and it's like the bottom card in a new column. And so that's the seventh card. The eighth card goes above the seventh and it shows, generally speaking, the influence of other people. You may find other more complex, more complicated, slightly different meanings for the eighth position at sites or in blogs. But, um, and if you want my opinion about what that might mean or how good it is, leave a comment or email me. But I think the simplest meaning and the one we should stick with is that this card shows the influence of other people. So a card in this position is going to be good or bad, generally speaking, depending on the question. Right, and the people it represents will be different depending on the question that has been asked. Right, so if somebody asks about a promotion, you're going to the influence of other people will be different, or you're dealing with different people in that position than you are for, let's say, asking about a marriage or about a father child relationship, for instance. So somebody might ask you about a relationship or a marriage, and this, this. The card in the eighth position can show the influence of family members or in-laws, since they're the, the logical influence or logical other people whose influence um, can be helpful to the question or it can be a hindrance. So by looking at the eighth card, let's say as in-laws or other people involved with the relationship, the question gets an idea of how much help these other people are going to be or how much of a hindrance they're going to be. So then you know whether to involve them in the relationship or involve them in the project, or whether you're best to not involve them or shut them out or not really pay much attention to their opinion about what, about what you're doing. So let's say you get the question is, tell me about my marriage, and you get the Three of Cups here in the eighth position. Three of Cups, friendly, sociable. So the Three of Cups here, social engagements or interacting with other people, that's going to be enjoyable. You give to them, they give to you. And it's like everybody has a good time with the Three of Cups there. So make room for socializing in the marriage, right? Or in the relationship. On the other hand, if you get the Eight of Swords here in the eighth position, 
don't expect relaxing evenings evenings with other people, at least for a while, because you'll feel trapped, the eight of swords, or the people you come into contact are going to feel trapped. And all they want to do is complain all night about their problems. And it's going to be a waste of your time, and they'll drag you down. So, uh, if, if you find, if you have the reading and you're told this and you find that the the relationships with other people are like that, then, and if you don't want it, then don't get involved with other people in the first place. So set things up so that you can keep private or keep separate and um, not particularly involve other people in the relationship. You, you might also... Um, Relate the card in the eighth position to a card or two in earlier positions that you already looked at. So let's say you've got the Eight of Swords in the eighth position, and you've already seen a card of the same suit in the third position, right? You might make a connection between the foundation of the question, which is the third card, and the influence of other people, which is the eighth. So let's say you've got the Two of Swords as the foundation, and you decide that this this shows that you're trying to become focused or decisive. Then, if you get the eight of the swords, the same suit in the house of other, or in the the position of other people, watch out for other people, because they they're going to try and get you back into old habits that you're trying to give up. You want to? They'll encourage you to be indecisive, or to not make up your mind, or they're not going to be supportive of your efforts. To, to stick to your decisions, as shown by the Two of Swords as a foundation. So you, you look at the, the card in the, in this case, the card of the foundation, and compare it with the eighth, with the eighth position and, and make some sense of it. Or let's say you've got the Six of Swords in the fifth position of what may come, and you like the look of a change and a move to a new position, and you want it, but with the eight of sword, the with the eight of swords in the eighth position, other people are going to get in your way, right? So don't confide in them. Don't share your plans about what you want for an improvement with other people. They'll just talk about the bad stuff that can happen or what can go wrong rather than what can go right, and or maybe they'll resent you because you're trying to make progress. At the same time, and this is a general point about readings, if you notice um, or if you remember to compare positions during a reading then talk about it and make the connection or join the meanings of the two positions for the benefit of the questioner however if you don't notice or you don't remember at the time of the reading if you don't say and, and if you think of it later you're not supposed to beat yourself up or wish you had said it during the reading and you're not supposed to decide that you aren't a good reader because you left out something that's, that now seems obvious and important. Instead, if you didn't say it at the time, then in some way you weren't supposed to say it. Maybe because it wouldn't have been particularly true, in which case you can safely leave it out. Or maybe because the questioner would have argued with you about it and it would have spoiled the reading. Because... You know, you can say something and you can touch a nerve and people can react negatively and maybe you making that connection would have touched a nerve for the person. Or maybe you, you, would, have, you would have made this connection but the person, the questioner, would have become confused or for some reason just didn't want to know. So generally, when you're thinking about readings after you've done them, Think about readings after you've done them rather than assume that you didn't do a very good one or that you should have done this, you should have done that. Because you can have had good reasons why you didn't see it at the time. So trust yourself. So let's say we change the question and think about the eighth card with a question about a promotion. Then the card, the influence of other people, will give information about other people involved with the promotion. Right? So it's not your next door neighbour unless your next door neighbour happens to be part of the team deciding if you get the job. Because there's a logic to um, who these other people are who have influence, and it depends on the question. 
So if it's a general question about the next six months, then it could be your next door neighbour because you see your next door neighbour. But if it's a more specialised question, you think about what makes sense and relate the card to those people or those types of people who would logically fit into the answer. So the, with the, the, the job about promotion, the eighth position could show your rivals who are also going after the same job or the other candidates involved in the promotion. And so the, the, the card in the eighth position can give you an idea of what these other people are like, right? their strengths or weaknesses or how much of a threat they are to you or to what extent they're going to be able to stop you getting the job, assuming that you want it. So generally, again, I think it's a good idea to tell the questioner what each position will, will reveal or is expected to show as you lay the cards. Right, so let's say we stick with the promotion question. So you shuffle and lay the first card face down and you might say this card shows the atmosphere surrounding the question. So it's going to give us an idea about the promotion and maybe what the interviewers are looking for or the kind of person they expect to be hiring. So if you're that type of person, then it's, you know, a good a good indication that you've got a good chance of getting the job. So that when you get to the eighth position, maybe you say this shows the influence of other people. So we'll use it, the card here, to judge the quality of your rivals for the job. But at that point, the question might say, um, I've got an ally on the interviewing team, but I'm not sure how much I can trust this person or believe this person. So you revise things and you say, OK, in that case, we'll look at the eighth card showing the influence of other people. And we're going to look at it to see how strong or how weak your ally on the committee is, how, how much he or she is going to be able to promote your application. This, this type of meaning is maybe more specific than you would normally use, but it makes sense for that question and that questioner. Right, so let's say you, th that's what you're going to make the eighth card show. So with the sun upright here, the ally is going to help a lot. But let's say you get the devil in the eighth position, then something else is going on. And maybe there are politics at play in the decision about who gets the job. So don't depend on the ally doing what they say they will, because they can't, or maybe because they've got some other agenda. So the devil in the eighth position, it's a bit of a warning to... Maybe if you're depending 100% on this person, figure out some other way so you're not totally dependent on that one individual. Or maybe the question is a general one about the next few months. So then the card here is going to show the types of people and situations you'll be working with or maybe working that maybe the people you're going to come up against, depending on the card, in the next few months. So let's say you get the hermit reverse in the eighth position. Other people are not going to be that friendly. So there isn't much point trying to get close to them or looking to them for support and helpful advice, the hermit reversed. So I say there isn't much point, but it's probably more accurate to say don't expect much from other people for a while, right, the hermit reversed. And don't expect an automatically positive and friendly response if you reach out to other people during this time period. By contrast, if you get the world or judgment here um, uh, or some other friendly and hopeful card, then the people you come into contact with over the next few months are going to be helpful, supportive, interesting, and you'll get a lot out of your dealings with them. So other people are a good area for development over the next few months. I think it's best to keep it simple. With the eight, And so this eighth card is the influence of other people. And the reader can think about what people or what types of people would make sense for the question. And then look at the card here to, to provide details about these other people. So that, I think, is it for the eighth card. And if you have a comment, um, you can leave it below or email me directly. Um, I hope to upload the video for the ninth card in a week's time, so it should be available on the 26th of April. Um, I'll be setting up the membership, membership site software at dynamictarot.com. So in the meantime, thanks for watching and have a good week.
Okay, bye-bye.